Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 17. We now continue with kinetic theory, and in particular, the Vlasov equation, also called the collisionless Boltzmann equation. This equation is used to obtain the rate of change of the distribution function. This change occurs when there are macroscopic forces on the distribution function. For example, if we apply an electric field on the distribution function of electric charges. Recall what the distribution function means. So, if we multiply it by dr dv, we are multiplying by a volume element in a six-dimensional phase space. So, f dr dv is the number of particles in that six-dimensional phase space volume element. Also recall that dr dv is given by this. We now need to obtain an expression for the rate of change of the distribution function. It's difficult to imagine a six-dimensional phase space. So we'll obtain an expression in a two-dimensional phase space and then finally generalize to the six dimensions. Imagine we have our two-dimensional phase space. On the x-axis is real space, given by the variable x, and on the y-axis is the velocity space. In this case, it's the velocity along x. And our volume element has four faces, given by the numbers 1 to 4. The width along x is dx, and the width along y is dvx. We'd like to calculate the change in particle number in this two-dimensional volume. We can do it by measuring the particles coming out and subtracting them from the particles coming in. The change in the number of particles in this two-dimensional volume is given by the number of particles coming out at time t plus dt minus the number of particles going in at time t. Mathematically, this is given by the difference in the distribution functions as shown multiplied by the volume of that volume element, dx dv. Because we are dealing with differential quantities, this difference in the distribution function is df. We'll call this the total change in the particle number. Let's now look at how this change occurs. Let's say the particles go into phase 1 and out of phase 2, as well as going into phase 3 and out of phase 4. So the change in the particle number is the number of particles going into phase 1 minus the number of particles going out of phase 2 to the number of particles going into phase 3 minus the number of particles coming out of phase 4. Adding these two changes will equate to the total change of particle number in that volume. If we look at the dimensions of the different faces, note that the 1 and 2 faces go from x to x plus dx, and the 3 and 4 faces go from v to v plus dv. So if we look at the number of particles going into phase 1, then this is given by this expression. Note that dv can be written as dv dt multiplied by dt. The reason we do that is because the velocity changes as one goes from phase 1 to phase 2. That is, the particles can accelerate. We can tidy this up by saying that dv dt is just acceleration a, in this case along x. In the same way, if we look at the number of particles coming out of phase 2, it's given by a similar expression, except the velocity occurs at v plus dv. Again, we tidy the volume element dx dv in the same way. If we now look at the particles going into phase 3, it's given by df, again, multiplied by the volume element, except this time, when the particles go from phases 3 to 4, at a particular vx value, then we can say that the x value can change. So we rewrite dx in the following way. Note that dx dt is nothing more than the velocity along x, so we can tidy this up in this way. Finally, we look at the number of particles coming out of phase 4, and we give this the same treatment for the volume element. So the total change of particle number in the volume element is given by the difference of particles going into and out of phases 1 and 2 respectively, plus 
the particles going into and out of faces 3 and 4 respectively. From above, the total change was shown to be given by this. The changes between faces 1 and 2 has been shown to be given by this. Note that there is a minus sign because of the order of the difference between faces 1 and 2 that we've chosen. We do this for mathematical convenience, as we'll see shortly. Similarly, the difference between the particle numbers between faces 3 and 4 is given by this. Let's now divide both sides by dv, dx, and dt. And note that we need to use partial derivatives because the distribution is dependent on three variables. After doing this and rearranging, we finally end up with the following. Remember that this was for a two-dimensional phase space. But in reality, we have to deal with the full six dimensions. Extending this in the three-dimensional coordinates for space and velocity, we have the following expression, which is known as the Vlasov equation, and is also known as the collisionless Boltzmann equation. Note the definitions of some of these terms. The vector for velocity and acceleration are given as usual. However, note that grad subscript R is given by this, where we are differentiating with respect to the spatial coordinates, and that grad subscript V means we are differentiating with respect to the velocity coordinates.